In statistics, the concept of an average or representative score is called central tendency. By way of introduction to this, let's say I come home every day to a backyard covered in holes. I have two dogs, a beagle and a German shepherd. Which one is the hole digger? A friend contends that the sneaky beagle is responsible, but my neighbour swears it's a characteristic of German shepherds. To settle the debate, I decide to do a research study using the experimental method. I buy 10 new German Shepherds, 10 new Beagles and 20 new Backyards. I randomly assign the dogs to the yards, go to work and count the holes when I return. Figure 3-1 is a histogram of the data. Notice that there's a difference between the two breeds. The Beagles seem to dig more holes than the German Shepherds. But this conclusion is based on a general impression or a subjective interpretation of the figure. In fact, this conclusion is not always true. There's an overlap between the two groups. Some of the shepherds actually dig more holes than some of the beagles. What we need is a method to summarise each group as a whole, so that we can objectively describe how much difference exists between the two groups. A measure of central tendency will identify the average or typical number of holes dug to serve as a representative value for each dog breed. Then we can use the two averages to describe the two groups and to measure the difference between them. Central tendency is the second of the three characteristics used to completely describe any distribution. Central tendency refers to the descriptive statistic that best describes the centre of a data set the particular value that all the other data seem to be gathering around. In everyday language, the goal of central tendency is to identify the average or typical individual. This average value can then be used to provide a simple description of an entire population or sample. Because central tendency characterises what is typical for a large population, it makes large amounts of data more digestible. The expression number crunching illustrates this aspect of data description. In other words, we take a distribution consisting of many scores and crunch them down to a single value that describes them all. Unfortunately, there's no single standard procedure for determining central tendency. The problem is that no single measure will always produce a central representative value in every situation. The three distributions on the right should help demonstrate this. The first distribution is symmetrical, with the scores forming a distinct pile centred around x equals 5. For this type of distribution, it's easy to identify the centre, and most people would agree that the value x equals 5 is an appropriate measure of central tendency. In the second distribution, however, problems begin to appear. Now the scores form a negatively skewed distribution, piling up at the high end of the scale around x equals 8, but tapering off to the left all the way down to x equals 1. Where is the centre in this case? Some people might select x equals 8 as the centre, because more individuals had this score than any other single value. However, x equals 8 is clearly not in the middle of the distribution. In fact, the majority of the scores 10 out of 16 have values less than 8, so it seems reasonable that the centre should be defined by a value that is less than 8. Now consider the third distribution. Again, the distribution is symmetrical, but now there are two distinct piles of scores. Because the distribution is symmetrical, with x equals 5 as the midpoint, you may choose x equals 5 as the centre. However, None of the scores are located at x equals 5, or even close, so this value is not particularly good as a representative score. On the other hand, because there are two separate piles of scores with one group centred at x equals 2 and the other centred at x equals 8, it's tempting to say that the distribution has two centres. But how can one distribution have two centres? To deal with these problems, statisticians have developed three different methods for measuring central tendency – the mean, the median and the mode. The most commonly reported measure of central tendency is the mean, which is the arithmetic average of a group of scores. The mean is calculated by summing all the scores in a dataset 
and then dividing this sum by the total number of scores. The mean for a population is symbolised by the Greek letter mu, and the mean for a sample by x bar. The summation sign sigma indicates that we're summing a list of scores. These symbols are part of the language of statistics, and help us to communicate with other statisticians. You're likely to have calculated means many times in your life. Nonetheless, here are a couple of quick examples of calculating the arithmetic mean. In the first example, seven houses were sold last week in Hamden, Connecticut. Here are the selling prices. Adding these seven prices together and dividing by seven gives us the mean selling price of $264,914.29. In example two, a student got the following scores in his five statistics exams. Adding those five exam scores together and dividing by five gives us the mean exam score of 82.2. Often it's necessary to combine two sets of scores and then find the overall mean for the combined group. In example three, a biologist measures the length of lobsters cut off the coast of Maine. On day one, the average score is 15 inches for 12 animals. On day two, the average score is 18 for eight animals. What's the overall mean? This overall mean is not halfway between the two original sample means. Because the samples are not the same size, one makes a larger contribution to the total group and therefore carries more weight in determining the overall mean. For this reason, the overall mean is called the weighted mean. To calculate the weighted mean, we need two values. The combined sum of scores, so sigma x1 plus sigma x2, and secondly, the total number of scores in the combined group so N1 plus N2. On day one, the biologist caught 12 lobsters with an average length of 15 inches, so sigma x1 equals 180. On day two, they caught eight lobsters with an average length of 18 inches, so sigma x2 is 144. The weighted mean is 180 plus 144 divided by 12 plus eight, which is 16.2 inches. It's possible to calculate a weighted mean for more than two groups. In example four, emergency room wait time is a four hour rolling average that represents the time it takes to see a qualified medical professional. You can Google emergency room wait time and see different values for different hospitals. What was the overall mean waiting time for this 24 hour day? 24 hours divides into six periods of four hours each. Here are the data listed for those six periods. We first want to calculate the combined sum of scores, so we need to figure out sigma x1 through sigma x6. We also need to calculate the total number of patients, so adding together n1 through n6. The weighted mean is the combined sum divided by the combined n, which equals 36.8 minutes. The mean has many characteristics that result from the fact that every score in the distribution contributes to the value of the mean. Changing the value of any score will always change the mean. Changing this 2 to a 12 alters the mean to a 6. Adding or removing a score will usually but not always change the mean. The exception to this is when the score added or removed is equal to the mean. So removing this 2 alters the mean to 4.5. Adding or subtracting a constant value to or from each score will add or subtract the same constant from the mean. So adding 2 to each of these scores is the same as adding 2 to the mean. Multiplying or dividing each of the scores will produce a mean that is multiplied or divided by the same factor. So multiplying each score by 2 is the same as multiplying the mean by 2. The second most common measure of central tendency is the median. The median is the middle score when all the scores in a sample are arranged in ascending order from lowest to highest. We can think of the median as the 50th percentile. To find the median, put the scores in ascending order from lowest to highest and find the middle value. 
If the n number is odd, the median is the middle score. If the n number is even, the median is the mean of the middle two scores. If we were to identify the median for this previous example, it would be $100,900. It's the middle of the seven prices when they're arranged from lowest to highest. The mode is perhaps the easiest of the three measures of central tendency to calculate. The mode is the most common score of all the scores in a sample. It's easy to spot on a frequency distribution table, histogram, or frequency polygon. In these examples, 6 is the most frequent score and therefore the value of the mode. Next, for these nominal measurements, male is most common and therefore the mode. And lastly, the mode for the pain scores is 2. Some data sets have more than one specific mode, where two or more different scores are the most common. When a distribution of scores has one mode, we refer to it as unimodal. When a distribution has two modes, we call it bimodal. When a distribution has more than two modes, we call it multimodal. A bimodal distribution is often an indication that two separate and distinct groups of individuals exist within the same population or sample. For example, if you measured shoe size for each person in a set of 100 college students, the resulting distribution would probably have two modes, one corresponding primarily to the males in the group and one corresponding primarily to the females. Technically, the mode is the score with the absolute highest frequency. However, the term mode is often used more casually to refer to scores with relatively high frequencies. That is, scores that correspond to peaks in a distribution, even though the peaks are not the absolute highest points. When two modes have unequal frequencies, researchers occasionally differentiate the two values by calling the taller peak the major mode and the shorter one the minor mode. We have identified three different measures of central tendency, and often a researcher calculates all three for a single set of data. Because the mean, the median and the mode are all trying to measure the same thing, central tendency, it's reasonable to expect that these three values should be related. In fact, there are some consistent and predictable relationships among the three measures of central tendency. Specifically, there are situations in which all three measures will have exactly the same value. On the other hand, there are situations in which the three measures are guaranteed to be different. In part, the relationships among the mean, median and mode are determined by the shape of the distribution. We'll consider two general types of distribution. For a perfectly symmetrical distribution with one mode, all three measures of central tendency the mean, the median and the mode have the same value. A bimodal distribution that is symmetrical will have a mean and median together in the centre, with modes on each side. A rectangular distribution has no mode, because all the scores occur with the same frequency. Distributions are not always symmetrical. Quite often they're lopsided or skewed. In positively skewed distributions, the order of the three measures of central tendency from smallest to largest is the mode, then the median, then the mean. Negatively skewed distributions are lopsided in the opposite direction. Therefore, the measures are also ordered in the opposite direction. Changes in kurtosis have no effect on measures of central tendency. How do you decide which measure of central tendency to use? The mean is used in the majority of cases. The mean is often the most appropriate measure because it takes into account all scores in the data set. But the mean cannot be used for nominal scales of measurement. The median serves as a better alternative to the mean when a distribution has a small number of extreme scores, or contains undetermined values, or is open-ended. For example, According to the 2011 census, Bridgeport, Connecticut has a mean income of $40,947 and a population of roughly 145,638 people. What would happen to the mean if Bill Gates decided to relocate to Bridgeport? 
Bill Gates has an annual income of $3,710,000,000. Adding Bill Gates to Bridgeport's population would produce a new mean income of $66,417. This mean is no longer a representative measure. It's more than the majority of Bridgeport residents earn, and far less than Bill Gates. The second situation where the median is better than the mean is when a distribution contains undetermined values, in other words, scores for which there is no value on the scale. In example one, sports scores, like in car racing or track or field, that have a category of did not finish. Or in the second example, a participant in a clinical drug trial who withdrew because of unpleasant side effects and did not finish the course of treatment under evaluation. It's important that we don't just delete this person's data. If a sample is to be representative of its population, this person is indicative of other people who are unlikely to tolerate the drug's side effects. This is very valuable information, but not something that can be communicated by the mean. It's also better to use the median when a distribution is open-ended. In other words, when there is no upper or lower limit for one of the intervals or categories. And lastly, it's better to use the mode than the other two measures of central tendency when the scale of measurement is nominal. Only the mode can be used here. We cannot use the mean or the median. And secondly, if the most typical case is to be identified, the mean and median often produce fractional values. To review, the mean is the arithmetic average. It's the sum of scores divided by the number of scores. It's most frequently used because it uses all scores in the set. The median is the middle score when scores are in order from lowest to highest. It corresponds to the 50th percentile and is appropriate for skewed or open-ended distributions and distributions with undetermined scores. And the mode is the most frequently occurring score and is appropriate for nominal data.